Hey everyone, this is Mike with Jetamin, and in this video we'll learn how UI components or your front-end components that you have in Jetamin, like the table component, interact with data or how to bind UI components and your data. All right, let's get started. So first of all, I'd like to remind uh, what we've learned in the previous video here that there are three, essentially th there are three types of data sets that you have. This is your collection or table where you have two dimensions, you have rows and you have columns. And then you have, if we pinpoint a specific row or specific record, we go to the records or rows data set type uh, where we have just one record. And then if we pinpoint within that record a specific field, we go onto the level of individual fields. And so keep that in mind as we move on with uh, this video. So UI components are the ways or to visually represent your data, to visually represent those three data set types that we've just covered. And each uh, type of UI components are tailored to a specific data set. So we can start with the table and table has also two dimensions. It has rows and it has columns. So naturally, if you want to display your table or your collection, you would go with a table component. So to fetch your data uh, in, within the table component, you can click on the table component and here you have all the settings, including your data settings or data binding section, where you can specify which data you want to bind to or which data you want to fetch to. Once again, here within the table component, we are working on the level of collections or data sets. So here we click into it and we can simply choose the collection here. In my case, I'll go with Airtable and I'll go with design projects. Okay, here it is. Once again, I have my rows and I have my columns. I can customize it, looks great. Now, if we move down to the individual record level, we have forms and details. And I'll use a form as an example here. So we have a form and we'll need uh, here, on as, as a form works with records or rows, we'll need to pinpoint a specific record. So we'll need a unique identifier from, for example, if we want to pinpoint a list from this collection from design projects, we need a unique identifier to pinpoint the exact row or exact record here. So keep that in mind here. Uh, so when we choose our first, we can choose here Airtable. And here we have our design projects. I have different actions here. I'll cover that in a separate video. For the time being, we'll uh, want to update a record. We click update and now we can generate this form. And now, as you can see, that looks familiar. So we have this coffee packaging, we have brand identity category. So those are pretty much the columns from this table. But we, as we haven't specified the unique identifier, remember we need to pinpoint a specific record from this collection that we fetched. Uh, Jetamin just uses the first one. So it's pretty much the first row or first record from our list, from our list here. So here, additional, additionally, on top of this data that we fetched, we'll need to specify the unique identifier for this form. And I'll just move into the settings. And here it's done typically when we work with the record level, it's done through filtering, dynamic filtering. So we go here into filter and we can now pinpoint the exact record. So in my case, the unique identifier is the ID. So I click ID equals and then I can fetch this ID from whatever I want. I can copy and paste the uh, uh, ID, a specific ID here. I can dynamically fetch it from somewhere else. And we'll learn about this model where we can kind of pretty much reference everything from everywhere uh, in a separate video. But for now, we'll just um, leave it as it is. And moving on to the final level here, the level of fields. Uh, which are represented by individual uh, input fields. Uh, in, in that case, we'll need pretty much to pinpoint the record and pinpoint the exact field. 
So here we pretty much have to specify a value and you can either type it in and it's going to be a static value, but in most cases you want to use to fetch it dynamically from somewhere else. And for that, we use the same model where you can, for example, go into this table, specify once again, moving down the hierarchy from the table level, here's our collection or our table and then selected row. This is kind of the built-in function that's available within JetAdmin. So this pretty much pinpoints the selected row and uniquely identifies it. We click that and then we pinpoint our field from this selected row. So that's how it works. So uh, if we look then at these two components, the form and the field, they have one unique attribute that the table doesn't have, which is, which is you can input certain values into those fields, into the form or into this individual component. And if you fetched already something from somewhere else, you can kind of change that. So there are kind of three layers. The first one is the UI layer. This is pretty much the how the value dynamic, typically dynamic value is represented here, rendered. Then you have the data that you fetch from somewhere else, typically the dynamic value or dynamic data. And then you have the third layer is your user inputs, because in most cases you want to create the UI, the interface or the application where users can interact with your app. And those three layers, they are they allow you essentially to create those interactive experiences for your end users. All right, so that was a quick overview of how UI components and data interacts. We'll cover very specific use cases because there is much more depth to this topic. Uh, we'll cover that in specific, in, in separate uh, videos. So if you want to learn more about it, uh, please check those videos out. And for now, thank you very much for watching and have a great one. Bye.